Nice. Oh, hey, let me put my phone down. <laughs> hey, why not? Why not? <laughs> I'm sure people are sick of that joke by now. <laughs> hey, the chat is busy. How's everybody Hello. doing? Miguel and Matt and Abyss, good to see you guys. In text form. <laughs> In text form, yes. Good to see you, your avatars and <laughs> yeah. your, your special... Uh, uh, the special color of your names. Oh, that's how you tell yeah. it. Can you believe it is December first? Oh, that's right. Well, that's right. For yeah. everyone on the other yeah. side of the, it's the future. Yeah, it's already December here. It's brutal. That's right. So you know what that means for me? Well, oh, that's right. Let's do it right now. Yeah. So now a word from our sponsor. impressed with the quality of your videos. I'm always impressed with the quality of your video. So I've locked myself in 35 <laughs> chapters. So not even in, there's too many for even December. You're right. So yeah. there's going to have to be a couple of words too. Yeah, tonight. I'm going to double up. Uh, hopefully they're they're pretty small because the book itself isn't much thicker. The only thing I was surprised by, I really want this to kind of finish the story because it's it's kind of Dragon. been yeah. Well, they've been <laughs> in, they've been in, like keep adding you know the different uh, mega corporation right. characters and they're getting closer and closer to a confrontation. And this book, the third book, is written in first person. So we're following one character. So I hope that they do an interesting job with kind of, you know, well, his, do you know his for, part in the story. Do you know for a fact they're following the one person for the, the entire book? Or yes. are they kind of doing like yeah, jumping I, I the flipped, I flipped okay. ahead and it says, I, I, I'm like, oh, wow, this whole thing is a Cybertronic uh, agent, like a, like a chasseur that was just created. So, yeah, okay. it's going to be it's going to be interesting. It could be multiple eyes. I could, it could. It could. That's true. That's true. So we'll see, but uh, and, and I did see mentions of some of the you know Dark Legion characters and mm. stuff. So there is going to be interaction with the storyline we've already been uh, on top of. So okay. it's it's funny when I'm reading this, I'm reading this for the first time. So sometimes I cut all that audio out, but sometimes I'm like, oh damn! Oh, you need <laughs> like do it again yeah, when stuff like... ha- when stuff happens. I'm just like, whoa! So I, I react to it and then have to chop that out. Oh well, you, yeah, because instead of just leaving it on the cutting room floor, yeah. Oh, put it. Jeremy <laughs> reacts too. Right? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's just just an hour. Oh, wow. ooh, mm-hmm. what? Mm. I can't believe it. Yeah, it can't be worse than any of the any of the other like wretched godless content that makes it up onto some <laughs> sites, right? <laughs> Jeez. Right. Wow, yes. that sounds very crotchety. Yeah. <laughs> so. So I yeah I have to get my uh, my template built for the uh, yeah for the video because I'll, I'll upload them. I'm not going to do a live stream. The first time I did it, I did a live stream. It's hard right. to read live. Yeah yeah. So um, I'm going to read and then post it and do kind of like a instant premiere kind of right. thing. So look forward to that uh, nightly. We'll see <laughs> we'll see how long I can make that work. And I'm, I will start to double up a couple you of nights. You do like a fundraiser. Can Jeremy make it to yeah, all 35 right, chapters? Right. Right? I should, I should. But I've already read two books. I've right, already done yeah, like so, more yeah. than 25 hours of this. So it can't be that hard, right? You know, as, as someone who in the days of X, before it turned to crap, mm-hmm. Had a pretty popular like live tweet reaction to some like horrible fucking dinosaur uh, books. Yeah, right, right, right. About every week, honestly, about every week, I say, you know what? Maybe I should do that again. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm not fucking paying for those books, right? right like I got them when they right. were free audio downloads. Yeah. I ain't paying like twenty or thirty dollars for for that stuff. It's yeah. not worth that joke. If someone donated it. Right, Maybe, right. but no. Oh, you better watch out then. You're going to start getting a bunch of crappy books. You oh, read this. I didn't say any crappy books. I didn't say any crappy books, right? There's a specific vein of crappy books. Actually, a, a, a couple veins of crappy books uh, since that author has like mm. five series and they're all wow. worse than the others, right? Like each one is successively bad, irregardless mm-hmm. of what order you look at them, uh, right? right. <laughs> it, it's It's... Seems impossible, yet it is. Wow. So does um do those tweets still exist? Did you deactivate your account? I've not deactivated it? my okay. account. Okay. So they they're still there. They're still there. there. Yeah, yeah. You're just not a, your account's not active. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Interesting. It's still it's still active. I haven't done anything. I just don't check yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You should. If there's a way, to just download all. I of think that. I have. Yeah. I keep. I think I keep. Oh, good. Requesting the archive and then forgetting about it, and <laughs> my download <laughs> links expires. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's not. A, I, that's not. That's not a bad idea. And it'd be fun to because you could take that text and we could present it in yeah, another yeah. form. So that might be f- kind of fun. All right. The various definitions of fun. Yeah, we're bringing more attention <laughs> to that, those books. Nice. So, gaming wise, how are things going? Uh, I just opened a bunch of oh yeah, yes yeah, so envelopes and packages of six millimeter. Nice stuff. So this is all the lion rampant, or this is all what? This, this is Zen- this, this Zeno. is a oh, bunch Zeno's of rampant. stuff, oh. right? Oh yeah. So it's going to be like I've scaled down Zeno's rampant. I've scaled down like Turn Up Twenty Eight. I've scaled mm. down like Sludge. I've got scaled down like the the Tonks game. Oh, so wow. I just nice. like the problem with six millimeter that I've talked about before is they're so small. Like mm-hmm. buying a few, you're just like that is not. Right. worth the shipping. Yeah, right, right. right. So... Because it's kind of a minimum, yeah. Yeah, there's, like, minimums and also, like, shipping. So I just put a whole bunch of stuff together and mm-hmm. said, okay, it's going to be, like, a year or two of just assembling this stuff and, and getting it out. And, yeah. Mm. The thing with six millimeters, is there's no conversion. Or not, oh, I mean, yeah, not, yeah. not that there isn't, but people yeah. are like, how are you going to do a turnip? I'm like, just... Paint them different colors because <laughs> right. a six millimeter scale. They're like, you're not doing a head swap, right? Right. Well, you, you're just are like, you going to do the pupils though in the eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I hope my face came across that, right? I don't do pupils on twenty eight. Right, right, people, yeah. Right? I would have trouble maybe uh, with like seventy two. <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's close enough, right? right? Yeah, but yeah. No, I just got that the other day, and oh, cool. uh, well, if you yeah. need some help painting or basing oh, yeah, anything, yeah. yeah, we could we can make that a project. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Very cool. All right. All right. So we know uh, what's coming up in December. And I'm also going to try to do, I think, uh, so you, you'll be traveling for, yeah, yeah. for the holiday. So uh, with Matt, I, I hope we can get this uh, worked out. I'm going to try to do like a, I've got so much stuff that I haven't even looked at mm. um, on camera as far as like uh, RPGs that have oh, nice. like funded, you know, kick, or shipped, uh, fulfilled for Kickstarters. That I thought we'd do like a 12 games of Christmas oh, nice. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And just open a bunch of games and uh, th- that are now available at retail and, you know, take a look at what. Oh, uh, that would be pretty cool. The, the, the now available. At yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they've been sitting long enough in this pile of like, please look at me. Please open me. So, yeah, we might do that. And it'd be fun to, to have a back and forth. So kind of open it on a camera, like mm. an overhead camera and then have Matt, uh, Matt with us. So we'll see. So. I'll be lugging a six-year-old through a bunch of international <laughs> oh, airports. Yeah, right, right. I hope you got the, the directest flight possible. I, it's not easy to Philly, though, right? Yeah. No, it's not. Ouch. Coming back is even worse. Oh, oh. Anyway, won't get into it. Oh, not I no, no Canada involved. I hope. No. no okay. Canada. That that's one of them was one of them was like fly to like Incheon, South Korea, and all that stuff. And again, like if it was only me. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Right. Cool. Yeah, right. I'll go. But it's like nope. Layover has to be short, long enough where we don't miss anything. Mm-hmm. Short enough where I don't have to, like spend hours entertaining a six-year-old right. in an airport in yeah. China <laughs> yeah, 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 or in yeah, Korea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah wow. those tempting twelve-hour layovers in China for uh, you know half-price ticket. Mm. Ouch! All right, maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Nice. Well, let's get started. So, uh, so just a quick update. Uh, I, I did the bumper, and now I'm just like. Uh, there's no big events, so right. Brinkwatch 2023, day 314, not much going on. Uh, well, I mean, there's stuff going on with D&D, uh, not directly Brink-related, but yeah, we got the last of the playtest, right? Yeah, the, the last cla- for the classes of the playtest. And the thing that um, uh, Paizo did, we talked a little bit about that last week, um, ability scores are gone. Yep. It's just bonuses, yeah, now. So. Which makes Yes, sense, yes. Right? So that even further kind of separates them. I mean, maybe some people are going to feel they're getting too far away from the roots of 3.5, but I hope that that means a new kind Pathfinder of... Pathfinder uh, 1E still exists, probably yeah, at a yeah. discount. <laughs> That's right, yeah, right. So hopefully, though, with them fussing around with 5-whatever this is, ne- 5 next... 1 five, D&D 1? Yeah, mm-hmm. right, D- one, 1 big D&D. Hopefully this means that uh, Paizo gets a little bit more market share and they get back to, you know... The happy times of what, what 2015 or whatever, <laughs> when they were split in the pie. But uh, I, don't know, I, I don't want this pit. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I don't want the pie to split. I want someone to make another pie. Yeah, right. Yeah, let's <laughs> make the pie bigger, make please. A bigger, better pie. That's true. All right, let's do this. I'm all set. <clears throat> Welcome to the weekly. 
I'm Jeremy. I'm Chris. And this week on The Weekly, Salvage Union, Flesh and Blood documentary. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Dark Souls redo. And the Roll20 Jump Gate. Ooh, okay. get ready for that. Hmm. That sounds a little... Uh, <laughs> get ready to jump. Yeah, get ready. So let's start with... Uh, this is Leyline Press. So it's actually today in Japan, but I, th- I don't think they're based on this hemisphere. So right. I think it'll be tomorrow. December 1st will be the full retail launch of Salvage Union. So on their website, uh, the Leyline Press website, their post-apocalyptic mech tabletop role-playing game uh, with accessible mechanics that successfully kickstarted uh, earlier this year mm-hmm. uh, for 110 pounds. Oh, so they're yeah, based in England. Um is headed to retail. So, yeah, get ready for corporate dystopia. So you are a salvager pilot scouring the wasteland to uh, sal- for salvage in scrap-built mechs. So a simple D20, core D20, based on the Quest RPG system. Yeah, so that's I was surprised, but I haven't heard anything about Quest Neither for a while. Neither have I. I mean, it was like last year, two years ago? I don't know. Time blurs together for mm-hmm. me. But I remember at one point in the past, Quest RPG w- seemed pretty big. Mm-hmm, and... Mm-hmm. and I mean, yeah, it's not I saying think they, it disappeared, but just kind of. They had some money behind them because they were the there was that blog that writer blog guy, right? So yeah, I think they had some money and they promoted it a lot, and I don't think it caught on. But they, you know, they were giving it away at school to yeah, schools yeah. I and mean, stuff. So, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying it's bad. I never really looked at it, right, but right. yeah, giving it away to schools. I mean, yeah, that seems yeah. pretty decent. Yeah, right. So um, so Savage Union has a talented team. So we've got um, Hamish Freider, the uh, art director. Mm-hmm. Uh, Francisco Silva. So they've all worked on uh, known uh, properties. And then some of the uh, designers and writers are any award and nominated. And also uh, Chris Bissett from The Wretched oh, and yeah. Loot the Room. So they'll have three full adventure modules. We're, we Were Here First, Rainmaker, and False Flag, all written by uh, any award winners. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so we're coming out. That'll be coming out today or probably tomorrow and whenever it's it's <laughs> December it's 1st in England yeah. yes and I like the design they have a quick start up there that, so you see the uh, the design of uh, the the books and stuff and it's fun it's that they're like manuals they look right. like manuals okay. it'd be fun if they were distressed because this is post-apocalyptic mm-hmm. if they were distressed and all half charred and everything but they're going to do a, uh, a bit available will be the um, Salvage Union special edition the core book the Rainmaker false flag and we were here first adventures and then uh, a dice set and uh, some discounts on bundles and uh, digital editions as well. Okay. Also, oh, that the the retail version is mostly physical. Yes, and mostly okay. yeah. This is this is mostly physical, and uh, yeah. So uh, Leyline Leyline Press is a UK base founded in 2021. So uh, yeah, they uh, they haven't been around long, but this they did you know, they were successful with their yeah. first uh, crowdfunding. So yeah, more more mech goodness. So Lancer isn't the only game in town, right? No, it isn't. I mean, there's a, <laughs> it's a whole. Man. So I I remember, I didn't I didn't back Salvage Union. I looked at it, mm-hmm. and I was okay. I looked at the Kickstarter. I didn't look at the mechanics. But as soon as I saw it was like D twenty, I'm kind of like, mm-hmm. mm, right. right. I mean, not to say it's bad. I just uh, not really interested in in D twenty stuff, even if it's different from like yeah. what d20 is when you think of d20 right yeah i don't know what uh I, I th- yeah i didn't look at the quest they, i think they had a quick start for the quest rpg as well i didn't see what was accessible or what made that their, their d20 so easy well my, i th- i Just, thought quest was something like it's always a d20 role mm-hmm. and maybe i'm wrong and it was just like one to five right seven right, right. to nine. like i think mm-hmm. there were yeah, kind of chunks of yeah, like success of, yeah. and failure, and yeah, failure with complication. Or, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so so we'll see uh, how they do um, retail. But yeah, it's worth taking a look at. I'll put a link to their uh, to their site when that goes live. Uh, if you go now, it's probably just the quick start there. Right. But that's worth you know taking a look at. It's free, so worth taking a look at if you uh, are interested. And so, yes, a documentary. So uh, before we get to that exciting D&D documentary that I'm sure is going to be all the rage next year, <laughs> the makers of Flesh and Blood, Legend Story Studios, uh, uh, just finished their World Championship um, tournament, and they crowned their, uh, their they crowned their winner, a Greek, a Greek fellow, who uh, took away uh, $100,000. So, yeah, their whole budget for their tournament was like a million. I, think. I, I would be curious to know how... The only reason I'd be curious to know <laughs> is because it's that sort of incorrect assumption where I have just learned about this thing. Uh-huh. Therefore, it must have only just come into existence, <laughs> right. right, five right. seconds ago, right? 
So yes, yes, I would be curious to know how many people showed up for the Flesh and Blood World Tournament. Oh, right. right? And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I don't need that now, but you know, that kind of thing. Like, it's it sounds like they're they're really promoting the tournament. They're having a lot of events, and it's a lot of just bring a deck events. Right. It's not like uh, you know you have to be registered or qualify from a local game store and you know win something locally. Uh, so this was November seventeenth. It was their largest competitive event. Uh, held uh, three days in Barcelona. Ooh, wow. that sounds nice. And um, so they're a uh, thriving scene. So uh, Alexandro, Alexandros faced off 463 rivals. <laughs> so that's a lot of people with decks. And I think oh. that's not all, even all the attendees. So that's that's quite a that's quite a uh, a bracket to make it through. And walked away with a gold foil legendary black envelope, a PTI, and a champion's prize card. Nice. And the number one hero, in case you're interested, was Max Nitro. Most of the decks were pe- people playing Max Nitro. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that's one of the characters. Yeah, I, and, I got uh, so, that much. Yeah. <laughs> so no invitation. It was a no invitation event, and that's how they run a lot of these. And um, the um, director, James White of uh, Legend Story Studios, said they're going to raise the budget for their uh, tournament, their, their championship tournament, from a million to a million five wow. next right. year. So. Yeah, and we can look forward to in this next year, uh, February, June, and September are going to be three more releases uh, for the game. So they they keep coming fast. And they're they're on that kind of Magic the Gathering kind of pace. Like they just keep. But you got years to catch up with them, bro. <laughs> but what they do is that uh, they release. What's nice about it is they release like a uh, uh, an expansion that adds heroes, and then they're su- kind of supporting the next ones. Just support what they just released. Right. So mechanics or styles of hero type of hero that they just release. So it's not you know must have. It's must have if you liked what what was coming right. up okay. there. So and there's you know also a lot of uh, uh, you know generic Universal cards stuff, right? yeah, yeah that you can use. For have anything. they run in uh, as someone who plays? Have they run into what's the word I'm looking for or the phrase? Uh, Band errata list stuff like that. They, Some yeah. kind of like rotation codes mm. with any card with any sort of collectible or growing card game like mm-hmm. this. At some point, you hit that point where there are too many. Mm-hmm. We couldn't predict this interaction. Right, right. things right. are getting off balance, and we just. Some cards just have to leave the pool to keep things manageable. Yeah, I haven't seen on the website specific cards, but I know that they've like retired to legend some of the heroes. Okay. So some of like the you know, maybe very winning heroes from their earlier sets. So like, winning. okay, this isn't going to be in, this is going to be tournament legal anymore. And and it may be also a way to get people to play the newer mm-hmm. you know newer mechanics. I mean things. that I mean okay, let's be honest, capitalism sucks, but that is a con- not a concern, a consideration, right? Mm-hmm. We want people to keep buying cards, so. These old ones got to rotate out so mm-hmm. that people are forced to buy new ones. I mean, I'm not saying everybody does that, but yeah, it's a yeah. factor. And the one thing that I read that I admired about how they're looking at things is at first they were having trouble with distribution mm-hmm. in early years and they were doing these limited releases of the first sets. And so the value of those cards was insane because I had right. special rainbow and cold foil versions. And so it was limited to who had access to that distribution mm-hmm. first and kind of hoarded those cards. And now they said that they're going to stop doing that with future releases. There's not going to be a limited version. Maybe there'll be like, you know, uh, promos and things that, you know, uh, show up at uh, tournaments as prizes right. and stuff that will have high value or, you know, different sort of store promotions. Because it seems like they support the local stores very much. The brick and mortar stores get a That's lot the of way to do it. Yeah, right? get, get a lot of support. And uh, so, but they're going to step away from that so there's not these insane card prices because I think that was turning a few people off when that this is a must include in the deck and it's two thousand right, dollars. Right. Yeah, well, if you want this the, the special shiny one, but uh, but if you want to know mm. more about this company and the phenomena that is Flesh and Blood uh, Store to Stage, uh, the evolution of Flesh and Blood uh, TCG is a 17 minute uh, video that was shot by uh, the LA based Miles. Uh, production company and uh they they track the last 12 months of this game's history and kind of do a uh, a whole uh kind of coverage of the community uh the pro play circuit fan events and kind of the general culture surrounding okay. flesh and blood so yeah if you're interested in that and then uh beginning of next year they're going to do their queenstown uh, celebrational which will be a casual player focused uh event with uh, community contests and open calls to just yeah bring a deck and kick some cardboard butt as this, think, as this article put. It. I think when, I don't know if they're just talking about, but like I, I think that is certainly one appealing way to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you don't have to qualify, you don't have to do all this stuff because I mean, uh, getting a ticket, an airplane ticket, just to go to this place yeah. is already the yeah, restriction, right? Right, right. So you're just like, nope. 
just show up with a deck. I mean, there's yeah. got to be some limitations or, or stuff to keep trying to keep. That'll fit in the carry-on yeah. too. Yeah. It won't. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And so this is uh, going to be free on uh, YouTube. So they're oh. they're just going to post the documentary on YouTube. And I think it's you know just a promotional because they've only been in existence for four years. Like the game is only hmm. about four years old. So yeah, they uh, and but they talked about a really long uh, development cycle though that they've been working on this game I think for seven years before this oh, so okay. they, yeah they've really uh, you know try to learn their lessons from magic and tried to come up with a game that you know had and slow uh, down slow yeah, down yeah, the release pace yeah, right slow down right yeah so it's but it's not bad though because the um the even the the full boxes themselves are not even close to magic prices. They're like half the price of, uh, well, of magic. Okay. Uh, magic, yeah. Well, that's yeah, it's not saying a lot, but uh, yeah. So I, I like that. And of course, as we said before, then they specifically named it Flesh and Blood because they want this to be physical flesh and blood interaction. Even though programmers can't help themselves, and computer science majors have obviously nothing to do with because of their coursework, and they have there's an already an online version of this oh, you can play. <laughs> so defeating the purpose entirely. Well, I mean. But there's, there's defeating the purpose entirely, and then there's also on the other side of the spectrum is like accessibility. Yeah, yeah, right, right, and and then and learning because it's going to do nothing. I'm sure the company won't stop it because it's going to do nothing but bring people into the game. But if that becomes the only way that you play the game, then it's you know kind of pointless. It, it's, well, as yeah. someone who uh -oh. back in the heyday of like Netrunner DB mm -hmm. would spend. Hope no one at work is listening. Countless hours at work, like <laughs> tinkering with like the deck builder. Right, and, like, right. Like, so yes, having an online at oh. least at least deck yeah. builder, mm -hmm. if nothing else. And mm. I never played on Jinteki, or I played like once or twice on Jinteki.net, but I found the the controls kind of not really all that intuitive. But I mean, more ways to provide. Yeah. People yeah. to play or and kind of test yeah. and trial stuff. Right. 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 Yeah. That, that's true. You, you can do a lot more. Uh, trial based stuff and there there are already a lot of like card catalogs and deck building stuff mm. websites online so the game has a ton of support uh, which is nice but play with someone yeah be at a physical table and enjoy the social aspect of doing that we're, get, we're getting a sponsorship from them <laughs> no yeah really i hope i hope yeah uh but uh, yeah so uh that's good that's good to see that they're um you know kind of rolling within and trying to uh trying to even correct their own mistakes like correct their own kind of misjudgments from the from the beginning and we'll see i'm sure it's going to be a big you know fluff piece about how wonderful they are but it'll be nice to see like you know kind will of will it be as big as fluff piece as whatever <laughs> D, &D documentary not, comes it's out it's not possible the no. mangaliano is going to really be because uh, he wants that dragon lance uh, role right so he's going to be pouring it on for D D. All right. Well, this is an interesting. I guess what third time's a charm. I guess is Oof, what okay. uh, Steam Forged Games is hoping, taking another stab at that Dark Souls license. Well, I mean, the, the whole thing about Dark Souls <laughs> isn't Dark Souls as as someone who is not a video gamer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but has just absorbed it through the culture. You you fight something, you die. You learn from your mistakes. You try again. Right, you just right. keep dying, and you get good. Right. So hopefully mm. this is them getting good <laughs> that's and right. learning they, from their they from have mistakes. Died. Yes, they've died a few times. That's right. So they just keep coming back. So they're coming back with a co-op version. So that's interesting. That I, I guess that was the. Um, so we really liked the um, Monster Hunter yeah, mechanics. Yeah. They, they recreated the. the you game. were also playing wrong. That made it incredibly <laughs> <fun>. easy. <laughs> yes. Right? So, well, that was the fun part. We didn't instantly die. Like we wailed on that monster. We were like, it's really easy. <laughs> oh no, it's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Um, so you can work together. So either prepare to die or work amicably with your friends and family on this new version of Dark Souls. So the, the interesting thing is when they did the first Kickstarter, this was actually something that they posted, I think, as a um, di digitally on one of the updates for the Kickstarter, okay. the Sunless City kind of expansion. And it gave you cards and ways to play cooperatively in the game. So it wasn't such a single player slog right. and... Uh, kind of the things that people were frustrated by. So they have refreshed the rules driven by community feedback and um, are trying to uh, make this challenging franchise work for them. So 2016 was the original Kickstarter and they produced, the nice thing about them kind of going back is they already have the minis. Right. So they're doing a new set and it's gonna, you know. Uh, and it's gonna be priced appropriately? It's, it's, definitely, it's, definitely, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely scaled down a bit. It's not yeah. super affordable. That was being, being sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they raised uh, five point four million in uh, twenty sixteen for the original Dark Souls game because the property was just so yeah, popular. Uh, so popular. But uh, people, a lot of people said it's just a grueling slog, and they've learned a lot because they've been doing licensed IPs mm -hmm. since then. So they've done things like you know Resident Evil and Monster Hunter, and even uh, Horizon something with the Zero Dawn. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the 
the girl shooting dinosaurs that are robots with oh, the, the yeah, <laughs> yeah whatever and the the, the 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 one with like the girl and that they were complaining about she had facial hair and oh. it's like have you seen a human being everybody has got to every right, anyway. oh yeah. they, they, they too they rendered her too well yeah. but uh, yeah so that this was available kind of did maybe not the full you know scope of what's going to be released but they've already offered this so I put a link to um, that post that Kickstarter post if you want to take a look at so digitally you can download these oh. cards and everything already to kind of do this modified version. But of course, we already know their their second misstep with the Dark Souls IP was a 5e powered RPG that they released in a premium collector's format with broken. <laughs> that, okay, look. Like, as much as I rail on 5e and the homogenization of TTRPGs, right? I didn't buy this. I never would. Mm-hmm. But people were saying like, there are parts that are obviously just leftover copy paste. Yeah. Right. There are right. things that do not work. Right. Like these starting characters, you cannot make them. Right. 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 So it was. The Rush job. Yeah, on that, I think that so. sloppiness. Yeah. Yeah, and it was really uh, telling that they released that ex- $150 version first before the ba- before anybody had even Get seen the whales. rules. <laughs> yeah, Get right. Those whales. Yeah, before anybody had seen the rules or anything, and then they realized, oh, we got to reprint these. So yeah, they went back. They issued an apology and corrected and reissued the books uh, to to backers and people that had pre-ordered. I think it was mostly pre. I don't think they took that mm. to. Um, uh, crowdfunding, but it was mostly a pre-order. So yes, um, so yeah, back in 2016, uh, and then I guess, and just as recently as last October, a 32-page full-color uh, Sunless City PDF was uh, uh, posted. So yeah, this has this is everything that uh, is going to be released in this set. So the bosses will be Dragon Slayer, or Stein, and Executioner Smo, and uh, yeah, in this new board game, which I think already have minis. Okay. And uh, it include cards, and uh, but now you can, if you want to do this before this even comes out, and you already bought the original set, and you want to play this, you can order the cards through uh, drive through cards. Okay. So get those printed. So you can do this at very low cost. I think not to piss off, like not to, yeah, yeah, yeah. because you don't want to buy the same minis again, these you know giant minis again. So they're trying to, you know. We're, we're we're trying, guys. We're trying to make this mm. enjoyable for you all, and there's so or ma- we're trying not to piss you off again. Yeah, right. there's so many expansions for this for uh, Dark Souls. It's an insane number of miniatures that are kind of floating around, and all the online retailers, the expansion sets. So yeah, there is a um. Uh, so nobody's quite sure. So okay, so there's this free one, and then you're going to release this one to retail. So I think they're just trying to bring pre- people that haven't gotten into this before this is the game that you would probably start with. It's much more friendly or the rules are more refined. And it's going to come out on Valentine's Day okay. next year. How appropriate. <laughs> and it's going to be about 100. For all you lonely f- nerds who got nothing to do, <laughs> right? You can play cooperatively with yourself oh, for $110. Them, yeah. Kiss. Yeah, so you can pre-order right now the core set. Uh, so it's Dark Souls, the board game, the Soulless City core set is now available for pre-order. That's a mouthful. Yeah, 110 bucks, and you'll get it on Valentine's Day mm, because you won't be getting anything else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And lastly, they announced the Jump Gate. Ooh, the Jump Gate. What is this? It's a modern overhaul of Roll20. It's about freaking time. Okay. Ten years and very little improvement on that platform. So Riley Dutton, I guess who was originally involved with the creation, you know, the original crowdfunding mm-hmm. creation of Roll20 and kind of stepped away and is back now to kind mm-hmm. of like, let's write this ship because we got this monster coming at us next year, maybe next year of the, um, you know, D&D, One. VTT, you know, the whatever, whatever they're called, that five, yeah. five improved. So they're talking about, there was a whole post uh, by Riley about uh, the exciting plan to modernize uh, Roll20 and bring it into the next decade. I don't know. If you got, if you got to say, like, oh, we're going to modernize, <laughs> like, it, it it doesn't sound that great, mm. right? Like, it's like the the supermarket slogan here, now, fresh, where you're just like, <laughs> right. that implies it wasn't previously <laughs> fresh. Previously right? not so much, yeah. yes. So we're going to modernize. Yeah. Well, I misspoke. It wasn't a decade. It was 12 years ago. Oh, so, wow. yeah, they uh, first crowdfunded in 2012. Wow. And, uh, and you know, they said there's been major, you know, uh, re-releases or there have been major upgrades to Windows and Mac yeah, in that sure. time, all kinds of, you know, Android, all kinds of platforms. So they're trying to fix the underlying technical issues that Roll20 has. So the Jumpgate is just the name of the overall project, a modernization and overhaul of the the kind of uh, engine code, the lowest level engine code, uh, because kind of the legacy code that they have, they can't, it's gone, it's does as much as it can do. They've gone as far as they can go. And they're basically hitting a wall. Like they're, they've got a lot of restrictions, any sort of modern kind of updating they want to do is just not 
possible. Uh, yeah, not possible. Okay. So they're reworking it along with a new UI design. And if it's anything like their website, ugh, <laughs> it's not good. A lot of weird hexagons. And uh, so, yeah, they want a faster, more performant. I didn't know that was a word. Performant yeah. VTT uh, and a beautiful interface using the latest web technology. Yeah, so their their old rendering engine using uh, WebGL and uh, three or four other kind of code libraries piled on top of mm -hmm. each other made it impossible to uh, kind of go back and, and figure out how to um, uncomplicate and make this thing run better. So they already put a, um, a, a test online. There's a okay. uh, YouTube video uh, giving you the uh, a demonstration of how much more powerful uh, this will be. So they said, you know, if, if you're really involved in these um, complicated long running campaigns and you've got hundreds of NPCs and pages and like giant modules like the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, you can't even run it on the current version. Right. It's just too much, too many assets. So there's a uh, uh, they showed an example of uh, 100 animated dragon tokens <laughs> in this YouTube video, and that requires 400 percent of the the available CPU usage, which is not possible, okay. and about four gigs of memory. So unplayable right now on Roll Twenty. But uh, the new the, what they've done so far with the new code, 50 um, percent of the total CPU usage and about a, a gig and a half of memory. So, so you know, significantly better yeah. improvement, not uh, amazing, but who knows what they even have to compete with because right. this D&D uh, &D thing may be such a dog that, yeah, well, any I improvement mean, <laughs> might be better. What happened to all those online tools for 3 and 3.5 back in the day? Yeah, yeah. Nothing. No. Yeah, right. Anyway. Right. Oh yeah, and let's not even talk about the abandon. There's been several YouTube videos about the uh, the fast channel. Um, they haven't even promoted it. It's dead link. The only thing you can see it on is a couple of weird services that nobody has. And All right. they just kind of they spent a bunch of money, produced TV shows, and then just walked away. So Wizards is they could do the exact same thing with that VTT. They could. Like they yeah. could try like okay, every how many? Oh, we've got only a hundred thousand subscribers. Okay, kill it. Maybe, maybe <laughs> that's gonna be weird. So next year might be quite a uh, quite a fiasco. So. M much a lot more for us to talk about. Mm. So yes, I, I love this. This was my favorite, okay, favorite I'm ready thing for it. in the post. Okay, hold on to your seats. You ready, guys? Okay, I know the, all you Roll Twenty users are ready for this. Right-click context menus, tokens, and bars. Mm -hmm. That's the innovation. <laughs> things under a right click really well that should have been something in the interface a long time ago well <laughs> right click okay i i don't use vtt's <laughs> right right i don't i understand the point of vtt but for me a lot of this stuff kind of pushes into the realm of why don't you just play a video game right 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 and sure like it, it's cool mm -hmm. all these animated tokens and stuff and i'm just talking like in general terms here but for me personally like don't need it, right? Right. All that being said, <laughs> sure. I'm like other VTTs have had these features for who knows how long. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a shame. Roll twenty it took <laughs> twelve years to update, but like they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yep. if you if you haven't had <laughs> right click context menus right. for all the twelve years, you'd be like. This is the this is what we're doing, right? We're so I here. okay. We have arrived. Right? Yes, I, mean, I guess you got to clap. I mean, right? They are. They're <laughs> right. they're doing it, right? They're yes. catching up. Yes, and uh, we know, like it, you know, they're supported heavily, even like free league. Everyone is supporting Roll Twenty. There, there was hmm. just a big humble bundle of a bunch of Roll Twenty content. So yeah, uh, but the, the problem is though, just like all of the, you're, you're going to have to choose something because you're going to have to buy all the books and everything inside that system. There's not. I think there is. They did talk about the, the PDF kind of drag and drop functionality functionality that Roll mm. Twenty is working on, or you know has available. Who knows how how good that works? But that's nice. That's encouraging that you don't. It's not this content is only in this software. You can never remove it. You can never print it or do anything mm. with it. So we'll see. We'll see what the how this competition heats up. But there's a ton of VTTs out there, and there's stuff that's running really well. Like we're really happy with Foundry, and there's good. Alchemy coming out, which is beautiful. It's still they're adding features and adding mm -hmm. content, but uh, that is a, a really good looking. You know VTT. what? I'm going to draw an analogy here, and I might be off pace, but VTTs kind of sound to me like streaming services now. Mm. Right? Where you've got one business way to do it, mm -hmm. walled garden, right? Sorry, our product, like these products only work in our thing, right? They've been formatted yeah. to the, and the, the ease of drag and drop or adding them in is going to keep 
people here. And if you want something that's not made for a system, then you're either going to have to make it yourself or wait until they release it in that format, mm. right? It's kind of mm. like, like you said, people are going to have to choose one virtual tabletop because the cost of having multiple ones probably is restrictive or yeah. prohibitive, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't, the, the other way to do it is just like not open source, but like we're only the tabletop. Mm -hmm. You can pull stuff in from anywhere you want, and we're going to make that easy for you to do. But if, like, what? How do they re, How do they make money? Yeah, yeah, that's right. true. Yeah, that's a good point. And because they probably get, you know, they get a piece of everything in the store. So yeah, they yep. they want you to add things in and try new games and all yep. that. That we've adventures. released in our store. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So if you want to experience the jump gate, uh, the launch will be there. Will be a beta for pro users uh, the end of quarter one next year. So just a few months to wait, and if you're already a pro user, you'll have access to that. And it allows you to import existing Roll20 games easily for playtesting. So yeah, we'll see about that, and we'll see uh, uh, how the, because I'm sure people will review that immediately right. once it's in beta, and we'll see how, uh, what, what they've improved. If it's just the same, like a, you know, kind of a, a new coat of paint and a faster engine, it's like, okay, well, mm. it still was a little frustrating. And connectivity and things, I mean, hopefully that's, the engine is going to also help with that, because we had any any time I've used Roll Twenty has been connectivity problems, right. and people that just simply can't use it, just like right. m nothing is working on my system. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. But they did say um, there was a quote: everything from a potato to the latest gaming rig should be able to run this new uh, Roll Twenty. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> so get your potatoes ready, get your folks. Potatoes ready. I just, mm. <laughs> Something about that, like the statement itself, doesn't rub me the wrong way. But as someone who kind of thinks like TTRPGs, like. All you need is like a handful of dice and a pencil and paper. Like yeah, yeah. latest gaming rig just kind of feels <laughs> wrong right, in the right. sense of like. Yes. And again, well, like I said, for that flesh and blood thing. Okay. Accessibility, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody is able to gather mm -hmm. in person or to do this, right? So yes, making things as, as accessible as possible is nice, but you, you don't need all these bells and whistles, right? <laughs> right. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, we'll see uh, what the uh, the future holds. So the VTT market is going to heat up next year as soon as uh, Wizards. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Huh? As soon as Wizards like says, oh yeah, all this stuff now is behind the wall. Yeah, so yeah. pay our subscription. Yeah. So look forward to that. So that's it for yeah. this week. So where can people find you? Uh, on uh, Blue Sky or Instagram. Uh, maybe a little bit on Threads too. That's Hive Mind H Y V E M Y N D. Where. Yeah, once I leave for the holidays, Ooh. there's going to be, like, no hobby-related stuff because, like, I, I'm <laughs> right. not bringing sh with me. But right? you got big stuff to bring back, though, right? Mm, maybe. Uh, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> like, just all the stuff I've sent to the States, I don't know if I'm going to be able to bring it all back. But right, it's all, like, right. books, like alien starter sets and Ooh, right, all kinds right. of, like, box sets and stuff like that. I'm going to try and cram it all in my suitcase we'll see hey, your daughter doesn't need her christmas presents she can she's not getting any. <laughs> she's not getting any, right yeah, yeah. yeah. no I, I was very adamant like i am fitting everything in one suitcase mm -hmm. what, what about these clothes i'm like my parents have a washing machine yeah, yeah <laughs> right? Right, right they have a washing machine they have clothing stores i've they heard have clothing stores right <laughs> this guy will just throw it away so not thing back. yeah anyway so yeah so how about you? Nice. Well, I'm still doing and finally back at doing Ooh, my nice. uh, single panel gag cartoon. So abuse cartoons on YouTube and Twitch. So I draw the cartoon uh, two a week. Um, and I didn't upload them this week. Oh, oh right. okay. and well, then look forward to that. I'll, I'll upload did they them. Exist? <laughs> yes. And uh, uh, so eat some snacks from the uh, uh, Japanese convenience stores. So um, if you want to read that cartoon, gocomics.com slash domestic abuse. If you want to eat those snacks. Yes, you'll have You're to. out of luck unless you're you live in Japan. Yep. Yes, right. But there are family marts now and Daiso popping up everywhere. I'm so sure they're people... pale imitations of what we got here. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. But if you like what we're doing here on The Weekly, consider becoming a weakling. Yes, the strongest of all supporters. Yes, on patreon.com slash upturntable. And let us know what you'd like to see more of on the uh, cast, and we'll uh, we'll talk about it. And, uh, yes. Or less of. Or less of. Yeah, yeah, tell us. Just, just stop with the <laughs> just, thing. Just, and yeah. <laughs> Give Kyle, leave Kyle alone. <laughs> leave Kyle alone. <laughs> So, uh, uh, and everything we do is on upturntable.com, and you can look forward to a chapter by chapter reading of yes. 
<laughs> Dementia, the third book of the uh, uh, Apostle of Insanity trilogy. So if you want to get your uh, diesel punk uh, story time on, that's happening <laughs> all this month. <laughs> Not a phrase I thought I'd heard. Diesel punk story time. Let's get that diesel punk story time on. <laughs> yes. So uh, uh, thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, so up to your table on all social media. We'll yeah. be back next week. Later, mortals. Goodbye.
So how is everybody doing? Oh, it doesn't look like the, <laughs> is the chat working. Uh, it's ready to display. Nice. Oh, there we go. It is. Nice. So how is everybody doing? Yeah, great to see everyone in the chat. Oh, yeah, you guys were talking about the... Uh, uh, the play test early on so people are happy with their what powerful monks and their super barbarians it's so funny that um, Wizards of the Coast is just like tweaking okay so now you get two points in four, four, fifth level instead of seventh level and yeah it's funny that uh, the players are so happy with that just it's easy to uh, satisfy and who knows you know, it might be a, a, a vocal minority that is uh, so happy about these play tests and then the, the core of the player base is just, uh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> I like I like the business rip on Starfield enjoyers. <laughs> the most bland, if there was like a, uh, a video game that was the most like hospital food, I think it would definitely be Starfield. Flavorless, inoffensive, and won't uh, do anything for you. Uh, yeah, that's so weird that they, yeah, Eternal 5E. It's like they had their biggest success ever, so they're just going to try to ride it. <laughs> Matt said, yeah, eventually, eventually it'll be like, bros, you only have the 2024 bard. Peasant. You got to update. Yeah, it's just so much of that stuff, you know, Photoshop and everything, like anything that goes from being a, a product to a service has that weird... Yeah, constantly upgraded thing. That's oh, bizarre. Ah, nice. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, what else is going on? <laughs> it can't be worse what are we talking about can't be worse than the majority of the black library books uh, oh cool yeah Matt is down for the 12 games of Christmas yeah there's some interesting stuff this will be some fun surprises for you Matt so I'm going to bring some wrapping paper home and uh, <laughs> wrap up these unopened books so we'll have some stuff to talk about yeah and I think hopefully I can get my camera situation Working so you can nice and clearly see, uh, see the books. <laughs> yeah, I don't envy uh, Chris doing the international flights, especially around Christmas time, because I think it'll be probably the easiest part is the international part. And as soon as you get domestic in the U.S., who knows what can happen? You can be stranded at airports. You can be stranded in like Texas at an airport, you know, overnight. 
That sucks. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Patrick um, sent me an interesting... It, it, it already finished the... Uh, uh, I, I didn't bring it up because the uh, campaign already finished. But a company got away with a company called... Or are they? Uh, Adventure Together Games got away with basically reprinting uh, Heroescape. So they did Heroescape Hexes, and they did a couple of different versions, like a one that was kind of a, a direct knockoff of the Hasbro version, and then a uh, uh, an 8-bit kind of stylized version. But it was reasonably priced. They raised uh, $200,000. Dollars, uh, but very reasonably priced, reasonably priced starter sets, which is exactly what Hasbro was unable to do. They just wanted the uh, nostalgia, you know, the two hundred whatever it was uh, dollars of uh, nostalgia bait from Haslab, just like they're doing with like Star Wars toys and stuff. They're doing ridiculously boutiquey kind of limited runs of stuff. But these guys knew what they were doing, and yeah, successfully, their goal was only twenty five thousand, so they did well. And they didn't get a cease and desist, <laughs> so I guess you can't, uh, uh, you know, patent or copyright the hex tile. So yeah, very interesting uh, that that went well. So hopefully that'll go to retail as well. And the hexes will be back. You don't need uh, don't need to worry about Hasbro's incompetency. Yeah, so that was a a pretty cool surprise. <laughs> Miguel said, do you guys know that feeling when you find the bits you needed months ago for building a miniature that you didn't remember that you know, where they went? Yes, I have a lot of cases with little little uh, dividers in them where I have uh, yeah pieces that go. Yeah, so when I was doing um, uh, the kind of kit bashing for um, Oathmark and stuff, yeah, there was a lot more interesting pieces I could have used. But uh, I was like, where did, where did those goblin bits go yeah and it's it's because i have stuff here and then at home so I, I never am in the right place for whichever i have to have duplicates of everything yeah elden ring matt asked about is someone making i think someone i think they are i think i heard about that and i think there is a card game or something out already that's branded elden ring but i heard i think so i think someone is doing that Oh, and there there already is a Japanese language Elden Ring RPG. I saw that in uh, one of the game stores here. <laughs> because exactly, Abyss says Elden Ring needs neither an RPG or a board game. But think of all that plastic. Yeah, the Dark Souls um, RPG, that must have just been a cash grab. It was something they had never done before, because I think the only thing they had done is those adventures, the, the, the hot pink titled uh, adventures that uh, they did for 5e that was their only experience with um, steam forged experience with uh, role play and they really botched that I'm sure they just hired someone that had never done it before or handed the project to someone that was you know never did it before and gave them an unrealistic uh, uh, you know deadline uh, all about the money yeah, GW and their Legion Imperialis scam. Yeah, yeah. People are even saying the miniatures suck. I mean, that's <laughs> that's all they got. That's all they got is the quality of their miniatures. So they can't even do that. And for the ridiculous prices. Um, so I'm really, I'm really hoping for uh, uh, Warpath to be much more accessible and much more. Uh, it seems like they're doing fun things with the rules. So yeah, I, I really want to cheerlead a little bit of mantic next year or i guess is it next is it this month or they're wait i think they might be waiting until next year for the crowdfunder i've signed up for i don't remember i think it's it's months off but uh yeah i really want that to be a uh, a bit of a success for them because it's a nice i think it's a good idea especially if they support it with uh stls you know with 3d printing with their vault i think that's a a winning combination yeah, and somebody was even saying, like, who is some uh, 40K YouTuber was saying, who is um, the Legion Imperialis for? Because the people that want Epic back don't give a shit about the horse heresy. So 
it's weird that they're doing that because that means there's so many you know factions and things that they're not going to do they don't just want a bunch of you know space marines so um tiny tiny space marines so it's it's weird but i guess that they were just trying to fit it into the already existing the tight titanicus and uh, uh, in, uh aeronautica they're just trying to fit it in there but i don't think that made anybody happy just like everything else they pretend to bring back <laughs> like uh, necromunda and everything they they fuck it up yeah right oh yeah miguel even brought that up yeah mantic is working on their remastering of warpath so I hope uh, I hope that's I hope that goes well for them. I'll definitely uh, uh, support that before I'll support GW's scam, tiny people scam, and the fact that they're selling out. It's like they spam me with it, and then I you know looked at the the release, the launch of it, and I looked at it, and then it was sold out. So it's like, why are they even bothering with all this effort to promote it when it's not even available, even if somebody wanted to order it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Oh no, Matt was there. He revealed I was eating Twinkie, <laughs> Twinkie pasta stars. <laughs> that's right. Yes, roll cake flavored chocolate stars that look like pasta. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Abyss said, yeah, the amount of money everything is now costing, and there is now more out there than in the past four years. Uh, in the past, what, the, yeah, the past two decades combined. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's really the tabletop. It's getting really crowded, and there's too much. Uh, and I think that's why GW is taking that weird, uh, you know, what, whatever light, both D and D uh, and uh, 40k or any Warhammer stuff is taking that. Uh, you know, we are our lifestyle. This is something you have to devote yourself to. You can't. You don't have time for anything else because this is the way. We want all your money. I think that's why they're doing it because there's so much competition when you just look at the second tier or more indie stuff there's such a huge amount of stuff to do all the miniature agnostic games out there to take away your time from 40k that's a good point I guess this it's really and I think it's just because crowdfunding has enabled that enabled people to bring stuff to the market that they probably never would have gotten past the uh, you know pre-production approval process yeah, and with the uh, yeah the price of everything going up, it'll be interesting to see if they uh, if it hangs in there. And I'm surprised it has. I, I thought for sure there'd be a real slump, but uh, crowdfunding is the people are still getting over a million dollars for various campaigns. Yes, yeah, right. Oh no, I just forgot to back the original. Yeah, but if you've got the original books, there's I don't think there's much new in there. They didn't change really anything. They're just kind of re laying out the books. And so the other ones are still available. Yeah, that's a fun game. Yeah, uh, Chris has already suggested we just do that on a stream as well. Forbidden Psalm was really fun. We didn't uh, record the game we played when my uh, daughter was here, but it was that's really fun and really really accessible, really easy to do. And uh, just get that on the table. Uh, very fast and, and fun and it's got it just like it does it has that that same kind of thing that you feel in um, uh, DCC funnels or whatever you get fond of incompetent like kind of <laughs> fucked up characters and I think that's a really uh, that that means I think the game is working because uh, it, in each uh, uh, every gang or every group is going to have their own flavor Uh, yeah, interesting. Oh no, Abyss is having the kids problem too. That's the same thing that happened to our kind of most active game group is everybody had young kids. So <laughs> their wives are like, no, you're not going out <laughs> as to game night every time that you want to. So it became a once a month thing, and then it became a once once every other month thing. So, and just nobody's schedules are the same because everyone's doing different stuff with their kids. <laughs> Miguel's convinced GW has copyrighted the hex before. Why not? Ah, uh, yes, definitely. Hey Walsh, how's it going? A visitor from Kick. Nice. <laughs> yeah, nice to see some 
some friendly visitors from Kick. Very cool. All right. Yeah, so um, so look forward to that. Uh, Matt and I trying to uh, take a look at some new RPGs. Or not new, but then new to retail <laughs> RPGs. And uh, hopefully I'll, I'll find some uh, curveballs, some stuff to surprise Matt with to see... Uh, to test the limits of his uh, uh, ability to uh, tolerate a certain IPs and systems and things. We'll see. Uh, uh, Abyss, we're streaming on five. We got five destinations right now. Yeah, so I, I was, um, I don't have access to uh, Instagram uh, for some reason, my account. I don't know if, I, it's just not, maybe not active enough or whatever, but they don't, they haven't opened that up. So we're on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, uh, YouTube, Twitter, and Kick. Kick was my fifth choice. It was either that or like LinkedIn. <laughs> Some of the options are because we were for a while on um, that kind of dead platform, and that wasn't nobody was finding us there. So uh, yeah, it, we've got we've got five in the account that I have for um, for restream, and I think um, I, I yeah I think tw uh, Twitch is still saying screw you with um with the stuff coming from multi-stream i think you have to stream directly yeah 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 it, they're doing it again we're not being archived uh that sucks yeah so it's live you can see it on twitch i think they've changed their policy without telling anyone i'm live right now i can see myself uh on twitch as we speak but it's not um going it's not being uh saved so it's not gonna i'm not gonna be able to do highlights or anything of it yeah that really sucks so i think when you're multi-streaming uh twitch refuses to archive your your streams crazy yeah and they, they disabled uploading as well so i can't even upload the streams to twitch but yeah so you can see last week's but you can't see this week's yeah the same thing happened with the uh, abuse oh yeah so the vod's uh is september 1st they changed the uh VOD storage, but it said it's just uh, limited the number of days. They didn't say anything. Yeah, seven day storage, but there's no past broadcast. They're not allowing any, and I think that has to do with multi streaming. Don't think they like it. So yeah, maybe we won't be on Twitch. <laughs> We're only live on Twitch, and let's see. There's only uh, I don't think there's even any viewers right now. All right, well that's fun. I know that's a riveting, riveting content. Two, yeah, there's there's one other person on, and we've only got yeah 42 followers on Twitch. Yeah, so I think we have to go, we have to have a dedicated stream uh, for them to uh, pay attention to us now. So apologies to anyone following, any of those 42 following on, on uh, Twitch. There won't be anything to see from the archives, but I don't think many people even looked at the VOD stuff. So they obviously are not tolerating multi-stream. <laughs> the compensated dating RPG. Yes, Papakatsu. <laughs> You'd be surprised the age of the girls that sell their time in Japan. My God. It's a brutal, brutal life here. <laughs> if you want those brand bags. Yikes. Uh, sorry, that was just a uh, <laughs> compensated dating comment from uh, Miguel. Brought that up. All right. Yeah, so we're uh, and we'll have to yeah figure out there there must be other other better platforms to uh, stream on. I just have to figure out if they're they're not offered as kind of a preset in restream. I have to figure out how to configure them myself. So yeah, if you guys have any um, suggestions, definitely uh, message me if there's a platform you'd rather use than YouTube or you think might have a good uh, uh, a good viewer viewer base for tabletop content. All right. <laughs> Hard no for 5E, says Matt. <laughs> Fishing the RPG. Nice. Oh, yeah, Butchered Planescape 5E. It's amazing they keep releasing stuff and uh, having to just water it down, you know, so that it cosmetically and in name is the same thing that's really weird it's really weird that they would bother uh, doing that crazy well I think we'll cut it there for this week 
but yeah, thanks everybody for uh, for hanging out and watching. And any new uh, viewers, please uh, take a look at UpturnTable.com. And this audio goes on to the uh, Patreon uh, RSS feed. And the podcast segment uh, is also cut out separately and reposted on YouTube. If you just want to watch our little news topic segments without the banter, before and after banter. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And thank you for to the members and um, uh, patrons and supporters for making all of this possible. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys. And uh, we'll do this again next week. So look forward to some uh, dementia tonight. Not my personal dementia, but the first chapter of dementia tonight. And some uh, game uh, some looks at some uh, Christmas RPGs not Christmas themed just uh, possible gift ideas so yeah Matt and I will get on that so uh, oh and also Star Trek we're going to do um, uh, uh, one more uh, session of Star Trek on uh, Friday night uh, North American time so Saturday over here Saturday afternoon and uh, yeah so if you like the Star Trek, uh, take uh, keep an eye out for the live stream of that. So I will see you next week and tomorrow for Star Trek. And you'll hear me this entire month <laughs> going on and on, <laughs> on and on. I got to find a voice for this first person character that I can actually do for 35 chapters. So thanks for listening and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.